Welcome back to the channel, Crypto Trend Trader. Today we're going to be taking a look at Bitcoin on the longer time frames and uh, sort of break down what's happening right now um, from a little different of a perspective. But before we get started, I'd like to remind you it's not financial advice. I'm not your financial advisor. These markets are extremely volatile, so please do your own research and trade responsibly. Uh, so here we have the uh, monthly chart, and I'm on Bitstamp, and uh, many of you have uh, probably been around seeing this chart um, for a long time and know exactly what's going on but it basically just uh, shows like long-term trend cycle for like the market tops and bottoms and uh, essentially like the parabolic movement of Bitcoin uh, from like the 2012 range back here all the way up to uh, present in uh, 2020 so um, and uh, what we're gonna be focusing on today is these Fibonacci's uh, there was a little bit of like a weird editing something going on uh, with that previous video so I understand it wasn't really explained that well uh, so I'm gonna go back through and just do like a brief explanation and hopefully that will uh, alleviate some of the questions and uh, confusion so basically there's two different scales that you can put your chart in there's regular scale um, which is this right here and essentially it's like zero at the bottom and 20,000 at the top and it's scaled like each dollar is proportionate all the way up and then log scale it makes the chart like a little more readable it uses percentages um, so if like we're down here is like say zero and up here is 20,000 it's broken down by like a hundred percent so a one percent move up is going to represent it by like one percent of the height of the chart so essentially what it does is it changes the scale so that the charts like a little more like readable and you don't just have like a straight line and then like a giant massive move up like that that previous chart right there so that makes this like a little more like usable uh, data as where in this chart like only these two areas are like really usable for anything um, so I'm gonna switch back over now and now there's Fibonacci also um, we're gonna take a look at so we're gonna go to our fib tool over here and first off we'll do like the regular fib retracement so I'm gonna start here at the bottom point and this is how you, you pull a fib from bottom to top. So you're from bottom to top of the swing right there. And then what that's going to do is put our fib numbers on the side right here. And then the pullback can correspond. When we're expecting a pullback, we've topped out, we hit a swing, and now we're expecting a pullback. We want to see where it's going to pull back to before reversing and continuing up. Or, you know, essentially it could sell back off, whatever. But the fibs give us, like, important information. So now look, the yellow fib here, the yellow numbers, they correspond the same action as this fib right here and what this fib is this is a different tool that I'm using and it's it's all the way down here it's the fib channel and we fit choose the fib channel it's not actually meant for this but it's sort of like hacks trading view okay so it's something that most people don't know about I'm sure like everybody's gonna be talking about it soon but you know this is something I've used for a long time I'm very familiar with Fibonacci been using this for years and this gives you like an advantage to look essentially at a regular uh, chart in log scale but with like proportion uh, how it should be without distorting like the numbers okay so what you do is you you sort of draw it opposite you have to start at the top you pick your point at the top and then you draw like a 90 degree just like a, a horizontal line across to like where you want your numbers to show up and then you draw it down to the bottom here so instead of drawing from bottom to top you draw from top to bottom and now you'll see I already have it drawn in there so I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, and uh, delete this one out of the way but you'll see now we have these numbers are like rainbow on the side and these numbers are yellow right here and just like I said it's the same price action they just correspond differently because one is affected by the log scale and the other one is not so this rainbow one right here is not affected by the log scale as where the yellow one is so on the yellow one when we pulled back we pulled back on that dump from 20,000 down to 3100 we came down on the yellow past the 786 almost to the 886 so that's like that's a massive move down there okay but if you look at it on the rainbow fibs right here we actually only came down to the 382 we only came down to the 382 which is like a golden the beginning of the golden retrace zone and you cannot say that that's just random because the 786 fib and like the yellow fibs correspond for sure with price action and that's how most people are going to draw their chart um, so yeah I would expect to see like price action based on that but if you look at this this uh, rainbow fib over here we came down exactly to the 382 
and moved exactly up. And if you look at this fib right here again, okay, we bounce all the way back up and then sold back off. And now look, where are we at now? We sold off to the 283, 236 exactly. So we hit the 382 exactly and rallied. We hit the 236 exactly and rallied. So, you know, that's important uh, that, you know, that you have this tool at your, uh, at your disposal, okay? So that's the difference between these two fibs is. This one is useful in this area, as where the other one has not been. Uh, you know, it's been useful for like shorter term price action, but it's not been useful like overall in the trend uh, because it doesn't correspond with these. You know, the 786 acted as resistance right here, and then we came up, you know, but we didn't stop or reverse at an exact point the same way we did, uh, you know, with the rainbow fibs. And now I'm going to go here on a shorter time frame, and we're going to look at it. And again, now I'm going to go ahead and delete this, this uh, yellow one here. Now we're going to do the exact same thing. Now look, I have the fib channel drawn here again, okay? But now the way we're going to draw a fib retracement is you'll pull, I'm going to switch back over to the regular uh, fib for a second. The way you draw the fib retracement normally is you go from top to bottom, okay? So now we're going from top to bottom. So for the uh, retracement, you're seeing like how far does it retrace of the move down that it just made. So if it sold off from 20,000 down to 3,000 and then it bounces up to the 618, that's $14,000 and that's a 6.8 retracement. So that's how we uh that's how we basically are measuring that. So now look, we're doing the exact same thing again with the rainbow fibs and see where the rainbow fibs correspond? The 786 lines up perfectly with the 618 and that's exactly where we got our bounce at previously. So both fibs are clearly very relevant right here. And then when we come back down here, you see we, we didn't really get a bounce at the 236, but we never got a close below it. So again, you could see it's relevant, but that's not necessarily the, the reversal point. As where the rainbow 382 down here, we came exactly down to the 382 and got our bounce off of it. So again, both these fibs are relevant, but I think the rainbow ones are a little more relevant um, for price action based off of like just that little bit of information. So now when we got that bounce right up here, we came up and now what is happening again? The 618 of the rainbow and the 382 of the yellow are corresponding exactly with this area. So this is what I would call like, you know, a massive resistance. The same way this was a massive resistance because the two fibs corresponded exactly, these two fibs correspond exactly too. And that's also our old support breakdown area that we had, like essentially that we broke down from for this first capitulation or for our previous like breakdown. So again, I think this is very likely that this is going to be the rejection area and that we're going to sell back off and come down here. And the most likely thing that we would do is the 618 was our stopping point or the 382. So I think the relevant thing to do would be to come back down to the rainbow 0.5 and stay inside this area or potentially continue selling off and come down to the 236 again. But I think that's less likely because typically when we come down to an area and we bounce from it, if we come down to it again, we're going lower. We're not just going to double bottom at it. You know, typically if it wasn't strong enough support to break out of the trend and keep moving up, it's not going to do it the second time around, um, especially if you got like a weaker bounce essentially. So what I would expect to happen is to come back down here, um, you know, and test that bottom. And then again, like we've talked about previously, we're essentially in this channel now, like selling off. You know, on the shorter time frames, yeah, we've broken out of that channel, but essentially, like, the most important resistance, um, you know, in this situation, the support and resistance that we should be most focused on is this green right here because it's, like, a strong support that we've been held up by, and then the red is a little less relevant, but still relevant here. And it doesn't look like it as much on the monthly scale, but when you switch over to the weekly scale, you'll see that that's, like, from, like, our actual candle body closes, like our weekly resistance and same with the support here um, and then you'll see like the channel lines up a little better here it looks like funny in uh, you know that other view but once you put it in this you know we've broken out of it but we're getting rejected here at the top so um, so basically that's it that's how these fibs work and the difference between them as like literally a comparison between the two of them you can see like on the longer time frames uh, how much it makes like a difference in price action because like for instance right here the 236 is at 4800 and here the 236 is at 7100 so that's a massive difference in price and I think it's important to pay attention to this stuff on like longer and shorter time frames and look at how these different fibs are interacting and uh, then you can get sort of like the most important levels and uh, you know potentially like you know when you see something react in an area and you can't figure out why like 
most people just think, oh, that's just where it reversed at. Me, I'm always like figuring out why exactly. So I'm checking my indicators, I'm checking my support, my resistance, my volume, everything to figure out exactly why. Because there's something maybe I didn't see. Because I like to see things ahead of time and then anticipate you know, the move based on if that plays out. That way I'm not just scrambling all of a sudden looking for that next move. I have an idea ready already. Okay, if we break through this resistance and come back and test it, you know, I'm going to take a long and, you know, that's a confirmed uptrend uh, at least, you know, for now. If it sells off below this, you know, I'm going to take a short uh, at the cross of the 10 and 21, um, you know, on the four hour and, you know, see where we're at when we get down to a key another FIB level. And those are hypothetical. I'm not saying that's exactly what I'm doing or anything like that. That's not financial advice. I'm not your financial advisor. These markets are extremely volatile. So please do your own research and trade responsibly. Um, you know, I'm just essentially talking more about strategy and like how I trade these markets and key lev levels and like trying to show off some of these tools. Uh, because honestly, like most people don't know about um, the difference here. Most people don't know about the difference between, uh, you know, regular and log scale. Um, you know, they're very just... People typically in life understand just enough of the basics to understand like something. They often don't dive like deeply into things. And something that I like, uh, you know, basically made as like a mantra or whatever for my myself is, is that when I'm learning things, I learn them from things like I learn those things from people that are passionate about those things. So I learn from passionate teachers because I think that when someone's passionate about something, they will devote like ridiculous amounts of time and effort into researching it and learning about it. As where if somebody's just learning something because they need to for a class or a job or whatever, they're going to do the bare minimum. And that's the absolute difference is, do you want to learn from the guy who is like certified and this, that, and the other, and you know, he's just knows the bare minimum is going to teach you whatever and you're just in a cookie cutter build or do you want to learn from the guy who has dove deep into everything and, and explored like the deep dark recesses of whatever it is you're trying to learn and then you know he's going to teach you about so many things that you'll have to learn the hard way and save you so much work you know essentially like allowing you to learn from uh, you know their research or mistakes or whatever and I say him but I mean him or her whatever but regardless, my point being is that, you know, when someone is passionate about something, they're going to give you like a deeper, more in-depth, more, you know, realistic or useful version of something. As where when you're learning with somebody that has certifications or, you know, you know, whatever reviews, this, that, and the other, uh, you know, they, they're not necessarily going to teach you like everything or they might not even know, uh, you know, all the details about everything because they might not be passionate about it. They just might be doing it for, you know, income or you know whatever views build a reputation whatever the whatever the reason is my point is essentially is that when people are passionate about something they're gonna spend the extra time to learn something so then when they teach it to you they're gonna teach you so much better uh, of a version of that thing and that's essentially where we're at with this Fibonacci I have never seen anyone else explain Fibonacci in this way and show off the comparison between these two here let alone most people don't even understand uh, that looking at crypto and log scale is essentially like a necessity because the price action moves are like so massive percentage wise so uh, well there you have it not really going to talk a ton about TA in this video I uh, just essentially wanted to show this off here and uh, give people an opportunity to uh, see something new and hopefully learn something. Uh, it's a very useful tool and it's much more useful on longer time frames. Uh, but in the meantime, I don't think anything's changed. Uh, we're still at a crucial area and we're below it uh, and it's holding as resistance. So, um, you know, at any point in time, I think we could easily see a sell off down to the $7,800 range. So uh, there we have it. Crypto Trend Trader. A little bit of a uh, update on uh, Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, uh, but more importantly, teaching a little something about uh, Fibonacci on uh, log and regular scale and uh, how to hack it with that tool. So, Crypto Turn Trader, and I'm out of here.